Right, lately there's been a pile of informative and super entertaining videos on first starts and revival of old equipment, but in all honesty, uh, that equipment was parked for reason. It was either obsolete, dangerous, um, or just not reliable enough to uh, make a proper income for what that thing was designed to do. Uh, we don't want that to happen to this thing though. That thing, it's worth saving, needs a little love. Let's get into it. Here we go. All right, this is a 2366, I believe. Yeah, 2366 case combine. These are what farmers use to collect all their fruits of their labor, their hard work after working up the field, planting it, praying for rain, praying for sun, praying for the rain to stop, and then more sun. You need this thing to get your crops off the field. Unfortunately, this thing had a little accident um, a few months ago. I think it's been sitting for the summer, six months, and that would be an 8-3 Cummins. And Uncle Rodney came over and said hello. You see that? That's not supposed to be there. So, um, this is actually my neighbor, and he stopped at the shop, seen a couple of Cummins sitting around, and goes, hey, um, I need a Cummins. Uh, they got quoted about $6,000 for a new 8.3. And I said I'd keep an eye out for an engine for them. And lo and behold, BNR came through once again. The best place on earth, right, Kevin? That's right. <laughs> we were about to scrap the combine and we found an 8.3 out of a truck. This is a Ford. And we actually need that Eaton transmission for our Detroit. So we're gonna rip the cab off real quick. And we're gonna be swapping this 8.3. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind. This is really high up. My uh, cherry picker, my forklift won't go this high. This combine runs an a pump on it whereas the 8.3 out of the ford ran a p pump these run a little higher rpm which is why that tends to happen also because you don't get the same amount of airflow over the rad you got this massive radiator but it's not like a transport going down the road with all the air going over so they run hotter terrible conditions dusty and uh, having a connecting rod coming out of number six is not that odd believe it or not what is odd is it coming out of the say driver's side and not destroying the starter on the passenger side so luckily we have a good starter all we need to do is take the sheet metal off and yank this thing out there's a drive on the back we'll figure out how to disconnect that and we'll get into it we'll have to swap the timing cover the pump um, the uh, oil pan and hopefully the injectors aren't different if they are we're in trouble we'll have to swap the head too um, which just adds up to more gaskets and more time. But um, we bought the engine and we are well on our way. in good shape so we can uh, take these mounts off what a pain in the butt the other one was so easy oh and it's got a wet line too that sucks uh, and I guess we can torch all we can torch that mount off but I think we're done with the center bogan anyway so this is an Eaton 10 speed I believe nice big girl this is actually going in uh, the bus frame with the two-stroke Detroit but it's got a uh, PTO like a live PTO to drive probably a blower or something and then a hydraulic pump to run a belt system or a pull yeah there it is see uh, the pump has a massive hydraulic tank on it luckily they're smart and they put some valves on there so we can close those so we don't spill any oil we'll probably just pull this pump off we've got no use for the pump but maybe we can uh, turn this PTO around and that can be our front drive shaft make the front tires do 80k an hour while the back ones do 20k an hour that'd be interesting we'll cut this mouth at the top and then we'll lift it straight up the front you got everything in the front kevin no i need a socket yet for that one bolt otherwise we're pretty much there oh yeah a socket so you need a deep 15 16 yeah okay all 
load it up. Uh, we'll split the transmission at my place. Needs a good wash, even though it's mostly just sawdust. Unfortunately, this it would be a P pump. The one on the combine's an A pump. So we'll see if the pumps just bolt on, but more than likely, we have to change the timing cover, we need to change the oil pan, we need to change the starter, which is why they scrapped the truck in the first place. <laughs> uh, kind of sad, eh? Hopefully, the injector sizes are the same for the lines. Otherwise, we need to swap heads too. We don't really want to do that. Or maybe just injectors. Maybe just injectors. Should be able to pop injectors. Oh, yeah, right? I can pop injectors. Yeah, yeah. So, we're gonna drag this thing to my place, which is interesting enough because uh, we drag it backwards and plug the steering into the auxiliaries of a tractor capable of pulling it but it gets uh, it's much easier to do with two people i did it once by myself i dragged the combine to vnr scariest two hours of my life and i will never ever do that again uh, of all those dumb things that i've done that was pretty high on the list actually um we'll grab a pit loader pull this out put them side by side swap everything over and then drop it right back in again and then it might need a little little cleaning here she's uh she kind of parked, driven hard, and put away wet. Um, so we'll see what happens with this thing. But at the end of this, it'll likely be for sale. So stick around, see whether it's worth it or not. So poor. Somebody was ecstatic when they bought this thing new. Now it's on the fence as to whether it's getting scrapped or not. It was. We're not gonna let it scrap. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna tow it with the 110 and hook the steering into the auxiliary. So one of us is going to steer it <laughs> while the other guy is gonna tow it real slow. What job do you want? I can do both. You can do both. So we've both pulled the combine backwards. <laughs> one did the scrap never wanna do it again. And I'll never ever wanna do that again. The problem is with the auxiliaries, the steering does this and it wanders over the road. Um, gets very, very tricky. Steering into the auxiliaries, how do you disconnect the hydrostats? Oh, okay. So found drives this freewheel. And you have one tire backwards because... Well, we took the big tires off and put it on the real combine. <laughs> okay. And this just has the leftovers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, without a... You should technically use a push-pull bar. If you go downhill, it's gonna kind of freewheel, which, which gets tricky. Yeah, we're just, we're only going downhill up my driveway, so. All right, here we go. Probably work better if you're moving, but you need more than that. on the road. I think we should creep over to the yellow line. Um, when we get closer to the driveway, we should just take up the road. If nobody's coming, just take it nice and wide. We got the payloader booked at 11, it's almost nine. We'll have it out, right? Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so these covers have to come off. Basically just the mount, drain the coolant, uh, lift these flaps up, support the hydrostat underneath here. There's fans off, we'll probably take the shroud off. And then rather than take the whole rad and tilt it forward, it's pretty it, it kind of bangs into a lot of other stuff to see if we can get away with it. Air compressor we can just take off, there's enough hose we can just flip that over. And otherwise it's just simple stuff, uh, your general mounts. Uh, we're going to leave the hydrostat here supported at the back, unbolted on the front. 
for a combine or an engine that has overheating issues, you think that they would have maybe put the chute out this way, <laughs> having it straight out rather than a sharp 90 there. Uh, I think your exhaust leaks a little bit. Yeah, it breaks all the time. It's been welded. It's had new ones. Oh, yeah. That's all it breaks. Oh, I better call Lyle. You should have a little flex pipe here. Why don't we just said forget it. <laughs> it is. So, yeah, this is a common problem in, uh, in all like the old Magnums, the 8900 Magnums. It's anything with a wastegate on it, those diaphragms leak. And then uh, they leak fast enough. There's a little orifice in here off the intake manifold, and it can't feed this line fast enough to make up for the leak. And you can see the line here goes to your aneroid valve. And if your aneroid valve doesn't open, it won't full fuel. But you don't notice any difference in how it runs. No, so all you have to do is take pliers and pinch this off. And then um, that'll keep your, uh, your boost pressure up. And that's an easy way to tell if this is damaged or not. Uh, we've replaced turbos before where um, this came with it and it was faulty from new. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you just pinch this off and leave it off, then she'll full boost all the time and it'll overheat. Yeah. So if it's, uh, can't do, can't do that either, but it's a simple diagnosis. Okay, Kevin took off because it's Saturday. Want to get this thing out before it snows though. So uh, we've got the hydrostat secured. Got all the mounting bolts on the bell housing uh, removed. Front mount, fan shroud, fan. Took the fan off. That should be okay laying there. Might lift it up just for a little bit. Um, fuel lines disconnected and i think we're good to go so i stuck a bar in there i got a little gap uh, in between here so throw a chain over the links and i think i'll grab the neighbor's payloader i don't think the payloader is hauling enough so i'm going to take the guardrails off yet and then that's it here we go oh listen to that the head off uh, we have to pull the head off of the original engine because it is different uh, with the cooler and some other small stuff and we knew that I knew that Kevin didn't want to believe it I told him <laughs> <laughs> he's like no I'll just bolt in no. <laughs> we're kind of limited to our options with the 8.3 because they only come with the p-pump in the trucks there's no ve so the injector lines are different too so we wouldn't be able to match the uh, lines which is uh, yeah, if you look at our dozer swap, uh, we could still do it with a first gen. We can't do that with this. Now it's after eight, which is why there's all oil on the floor because it slipped off of the forks. And I knocked the oil filter off. Luckily, not not much damage. A little dent in the oil pan, and no broken legs. No broken legs. <laughs> even though we tried to save the motor. Yeah. So no cameras rolling because the exciting stuff never ha always happens off camera. But uh, we loosened all the rockers. We've got the fuel lines off. We've got the fuel lines off to the filter right now. We took our turbo lines off so we can get the valve cover off and we'll lift that head off. I'll get the alternator and stuff out of the way. And just to make sure that nothing happened to number six head. And, I, and from the looks of it, we're taking bets. I'm gonna say the entire head is crap. <laughs> <laughs> and you're shit out of luck. <laughs> we should have no never way, done man. this in rod the first place. Way down. It's all good. <laughs> the rod was on its way down, so we think it's okay because it, it was down low. The, the cylinder is cracked, like the sleeve is cracked, but I think it was on its way down. So, uh, a few more things. We'll grab the forklift, lift the head off, and then go from there. So, the injectors don't have a detent, so you can spin it. If you take the fork out, um, you can try and crack it loose and then lift up underneath. Otherwise, just put the injector line back on it and then some pry bars and and lift up. This one's been being a pain. You're gonna try and do it without, but I think just put the line back on it again. There we go. So. All right, now we can get out those head bolts. Oh, oh, why is the 
Walter tube is still on. Whoa! There she goes. Yeah, I got it unhooked. Oh, well, there we go. And, oh, you're lucky. It's in good shape. You don't have to spend six grand at the machine shop to fix a bunch of battered. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's good to go. Yeah, we can even use the pistons. Yeah, the, uh, we're short a couple push rods. Oh, is that one split? That one's still okay. This one disappeared, I think. Are you done yet? Unless Jen's over here watering plants. Hmm. Cross on this. Hey. Check out number five. Number five got a big scarf on my side. Yeah. Oh, look at that, eh? Yeah, what, what happened there? Well, everything went for shit on the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, but not not in the top. Mm -hmm. Number five is fine. It's spinning like as it should beside. I don't know. That's oily there. That's weird. I think we're right though. Beauty. Now the big thing is seeing if the pump will bolt on to the other timing case otherwise we gotta cut off the cam gear and all that fun stuff i don't think this cam is coming out are we even gonna pretend to use this push rod or we're just no gonna just toss it, it toss it because the other ones we'll, we'll use all the other ones the other ones will be straight yeah that's it for today um, I'm gonna do a bunch of other stuff. It'll be another week or two before we get back at this next one, but we'll figure it out. Here we go.